it is me, Samuel Vest G1. I am back. Back. Fucking hell, man. Um, I My phone decided to play up, and they gave me a fucking piece of shit thing to re to replace it while while mine was off for repair. Um, I finally got her back, and she's working nice. Yes, I give her a female pronoun um, because I call her Majel, because I call my computer Majel and my Xbox Majel, because I'm that fucking... Super Star Trek nerdy, despite wearing a Star Wars t-shirt right now. <laughs> Anywho, we are 23 days, 5 hours, and about 40 minutes and some change away from T TFN. Oh my lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, I can't fucking wait. I certainly, I just can't fucking wait. Um, we are so close now, and I've got a huge pile of scratch ready to be spent on gold plastic. Yes, gold plastic. Um, yeah, so, the beautiful Dave and the beautiful Emily. Um, um, why am I pointing over there? I don't know. But Dave and Emily have them more questions. And I am going to answer them. Yes. That's how you see how that works. They, ans they ask, I answer. So, the first question, question number one, um, is... Who was the best person you met at a convention? Now, that is a really hard thing to say. Um, a really hard thing to ask, rather, um, an answer, because um, I've met some wonderful people over the years, you know, not just at Star Trek, uh, Star Trek, not just at TFN and Auto Assembly and stuff like that, I've met people at Star Trek conventions that have been brilliant, and, um, you know, and local conventions as well, you know, it, I can't answer that. I've met so many wonderful people. Um, people I would consider my best of friends, you know? Um, and, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pepsi, because it's fucking early morning. I am drinking a beer this early in the morning. I've met some wonderful people, some really nice people over the years, and I can't say who was the best person I met because I met so many, you know? Um, that includes guests um, and attendees and and just general awesomeness of the people there, you know. Um, and that's it. I can't. I can't. M loads of people. I just. I'm not going to name names. Otherwise, I'll be here all fucking day. Um, so yeah, loads of people. I know it's a fucking really cheap fucking cop out kind of answer, but it's the truth though, you know. So. Question number two, what was your favourite pickup? Now, there's been a few over the last few years, um, but my favourite pickup, and, I'm, and I've told you this story a million times, it's going to be my MP Soundwave, my masterpiece Soundwave. And let's travel back now to the year of 2013. Um, I was unemployed then, and it fucking sucked. Um... <clears throat> and that year's auto assembly, um, I'd sold a lot of my stuff, basically. Um, a lot of stuff. At a local convention here in Hull. Um, a lot of figures, a lot of comics, stuff like that. Stuff I really didn't want to sell, but but wanting to go to TFN, uh, to auto assembly, sorry, at that time. <clears throat> um, it was just kind of a um, necessity, you know? Um, and and quite cathar cathartic, cathartic, quite good cathartic, quite good. Fucking, I can't even say it. It's fucking this this because it's like eight o'clock in the nine o'clock in the morning. Um, quite cathartic. There we are. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, to purge, if you know what I mean. And um, so I made a fucking lot of money as well. So I thought, you know what? I'm fucking gonna go out or something like that. Yeah. And um, the job centre, being the fucking pricks that they are, decided to fuck me over. Um, anyway, I managed to... Re I'm not getting into the details, but the ma I managed to sort it out later. But, you know, it it just put a downer on the... Um, sorry. Fucking moth on one of my, on my MP... Uh, Loud pedal, fucking dirty creatures. Anyway, sorry, yeah. So anyway, it, it kind of put a downer um, on me because I was supposed to get paid the day before we 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 were coming down, so the Wednesday. 
but I didn't. So anyway, um, pissed me off no end. So I'm coming home. I've got coming home. Going down to the convention. I'm sat on the bus going fucking fucking jobs and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I get there and um, the Friday, and I'm still a bit fucking annoyed. Um, and Billy comes over to me and he goes, I've heard what the job said and a fucking bunch of bastards. I went, I know, right? He says, he goes, well, just have a good, good. forget about it for now, just have a good weekend. I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying my best. Now, Jim had turned up, the lovely, wonderful Monkeys NTV. Jim um, turned up and he was, sell he was selling a few bits and pieces. And one of the things he was selling was his MP Soundwave. And I went, oh, I just happened to go, how much? And he went, oh, to you, 100 quid. Because I think they're going for 120 or 130, I think, in the dealer's room. Um, or that's the general consensus, at least. Um, and I'm like, fucking, I could not get my wallet out quick enough. I basically picked it up and basically threw the cash at him, grabbed the fucking box, ran over to the back of the bar. Um, for those of you who know, the... the, 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 the um, Hilton Bar, there's a, like a little, I guess it's a, um, a waiter station type thing, and um, and that's right near the the, the, the back entrance to, to lead you to the, 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 the swimming pool, toilets, lifts, sort of area. I went and hid there and went and became Gollum for, for 20 minutes, and I'm sat there going, my precious, and it fucking just... All my problems went, and it was brilliant, and I love Jim for that, and um, it, it it just made my fucking weekend. It really did, um, and the, the the convention hadn't started proper yet either, so everything on top of that was a bonus. Um, that was the year Paul Arden come back as well. Lovely dude, he's Paul Arden. Um, um, but. But, I think it was 2013, I'm sure it was. No, 2012 was Paul Arden. 2013 then. Dan Gilbert then. Um, was that 2014? Do you know, I can't even remember. Fuck it. <laughs> but, as pickups go though, I look at my MP Soundwave and it reminds me of that, that moment. Because, if you... Because... Because what it is, when you buy something at TFN, it reminds you of that event. And it, and if you buy it off somebody, it reminds you of that person as well. So, in, it, so, um, in effect, you're actually buying a memory. I know that, I know that sounds real fucking stupid. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but, you, but I look at that and it reminds me of that day, at that moment, where my head was and the fact that Jim would just... Right place, right time, managed to fucking, you know, change, change, kill it, you know, kill my downer, kill my fucking um, pissed offness, if that's even a word, and he um, made my weekend. So, but then I look at my shelf up there, I've got me Insecticon clones, which I just re recently reviewed, you should be fucking watching them, <laughs> off Clet 75 Graham, and then I've got me um, Beast Wars figures and. Stuff like that. And I'm looking, I'm going, well, I got that off such and such, and I got that off so and so, and, and Ian Pyatt gave me that. You know what I mean? And it, and it, and it, it, it's a memory of that event, you know? And it's a memory. So, for, in effect, when you buy something from TFN, um, regardless of what it is, it reminds you of that event, of that moment in time. And I think that is, that's brilliant, I think, you know, because. We all love this thing. Um, we all love each other. We all love spending time with each other because we're all just a bunch of drunken, um, rowdy, raucous fucking children, basically. And and you know what? I won't change it for the fucking world. So, um, so yeah. So, yeah. So, let's see what the next question is. Question number three. Biggest convention mistake. Well... I have made some doozies in my time, um, some of which I'm not going to go into here, um, but I think the biggest mistake you can make is 
spending all your money in one go. I've made videos about um, this very subject on this very channel last year and year before. Um, you might be able to find them in a playlist here at the end. But um, <laughs> but um, I think the biggest mistake is spending all your money straight away because the temptation is there to go into that dealer's room and just go, holy shit. They have every toy I can think of. Everything from G1 up to fucking um, R.I.D. You know, the new R.I.D. And everything in between that. And you... I mean, it, it's the temptation is going in, opening your wallet and buying everything straight away. And then going to the bar and sitting down and going, oh, look at all this cool shit I bought. Blah, blah, blah. And then you take it up to the room and you look into your wallet and you've gone, oh dear, there's nothing there. Oh dear. Oh dear. What do I do for the rest of the weekend? Yeah. So, that is the biggest convention mistake I ever made. And that is going back 2009, the first auto assembly I went to. And, um, I did that very thing. I went and spunk my load, basically. And, um, <clears throat> and for the rest of the weekend, I was kind of shit. <laughs> what do I do? You know. I can't afford food, I can't afford beer. Um, well, actually, no. That's, I could afford a couple of beers, but since the Sunday, uh, and that was another big mistake as well, was 2009, going Friday and leaving Sunday. And ever since that, because what annoyed me about that was when I was coming home on the bus, and I'd been, I'd been, and I'd, and I'd, I'd, I'd um, a million friends requests. Sorry, train. I came on train that year. And a million friend requests on Facebook. And I'm, you know, adding people and that. And as I'm leaving, this picture's been put on Facebook. And um, I'm looking going, this, the guys are still there. A lot of the guys are still there now. And I, and, it, and it really upset me when I'm on my way back. And I'm like halfway home going, oh, you fuckers still having a beer and that, you know. Not that I could afford a beer at that point. But you know what I mean, though, you know. So... Yeah, so that kind of really upset me a little bit. And um, so that was another mistake I made. And ever since then, went Thursday, came back Monday. Because you've only got... You know, because this only happens once a year. Um, and you only have so much time to spend with these people. And you want to make the most of it. So that's why, that's why I count Thursday as the first day. Because even though technically Friday is the first day, the fan night, but I count Thursday as the first day because we're there, we're talking to these people. Fucking dogs. There's dogs barking, not like something chronic lately. It must be the weather. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's... And that was a big mistake, leaving early, yeah. Um, and, of course, I didn't know any better back then. Now I do. Um, and, like I say, the... the um, yeah, they're spending your money in one go. My advice, if, you, if you're going for your first time, my advice is, you know, if there's that thing that you want, buy it, by all means. You know, buy the expensive thing first. But then just chill and walk around and have a look. And and um, and I think having, everybody's going, everybody's going on the Facebook groups at the minute, what's your shopping list? And it's, you know, and people are getting extensive and people are going, well, I want this, that, and the other. Well, that's fine, but I find that, if you don't have a particular shopping list, if you um, kind of have a shopping list in your head, because if you go going, I want X, Y, and Z, and you go there, walk in the dealer's room, and they don't have X, Y, and Z, you'll get pissed off. Oh, well, they didn't have the fucking shit I wanted. You know, blah, 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 blah. It's fucking bullshit this. I'm never coming again. You don't want that. My advice is, one or two things that you really want, and then see what else. Because I think you make better purchases when you when you actually think about it, instead of just rushing in buying everything that you can. If you you know and you're marking it off on your list, if you go in with an idea of what you want, you say, "Well, I want a bit of G1, I want a bit of Beast Wars, I want a bit of Prime, I want a bit of Amada Trilogy, or whatever it is, whatever it is your poison." Um, you can go. Well, I would like this and I would like that, but not. I definitely need these guys. If you don't find them, 
don't matter if you find something cooler, you know, if I, cooler, better, something different. And then you might, because you might come to a table that had that fucking toy there that you didn't know that you wanted. And you, and you pick it up and you go, oh my God, this is fucking cool. It's weird and bizarre and strange. And, and it's only a fiver fucking having it. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So yeah, that's, that's that. So next question. Rational and chaotic. Next question that has two answers. What are your two favourite stories from past um, conventions, basically? Well, there are a few. I think one of my best memories, um, like I said, one is my Soundwave story that I regaled you with earlier. Um, but I think... I think one of my best favorite time, favorite moments was um, 2009, um, and it was getting to the hotel, sorting out my hotel room because I'd booked a fucking double room that year. Uh, a mate of mine um, was supposed to come with me from Hull, and then decided that he wasn't going to do come at virtually the last minute. I was like, oh, so I'm going to fuck out for this fucking massive room on my own. Um, I think that's where a lot of my money went as well. So anyway, regardless to that, um, I sorted it all out and came downstairs, walked out into that balcony, walked through the bar into the balcony, and outside, it was a glorious summer's afternoon, and it, I had all my subscription list sat outside, basically. Um, and it was the most surrealist of moments I think I've ever had because outside there was Ray I Love Mess, George Exaggerated Elegy, Sammy Skull Green 140 um, there was um, Nick True Phantasm, there was Dave Callow Prime there was Chris McFeely, there was Jeff there was Pred Trish um, Simon Ski Diancis um uh, Isa, Tori, um, Glenn, uh, Brad, Bubs, um, I was trying to think who else was out there, Nicole, um, and just like everybody out there. Oh, there was uh, Von Rojas as well, there was Mike Blanchard was there, um, who mysteriously disappeared. Um, but it was, like I say, it was such a surreal moment and it just clicked. You know, we were a, th a Hot Rod G1 fell um, as well, the rod. Um, and we just fucking clicked. Like, I've never clicked with a group of people before, if that makes sense. Um, there was just something about our J-Bot as well. Um, there was something about that moment in time, at that location, that, like lightning in a bottle, basically. And it was, it was just fantastic. It was just that fantastic moment. And ever since then, it's just become, become friends. And while we're at the, while we're talking at the bar and having a drink and stuff like that, Greg Berger materialised into the room and he went round every single person at that fucking bar and balcony and he spoke to every single person. But not just like, hi, I'm Greg, welcome, thank you for coming. Hi, I'm Greg. No, it was, he was genuinely interested in you and where you were from and, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. And it was just a wonderful experience. Um... And it was, like I say, I was quite, I don't get starstruck very often. And and I was very, and, and I wasn't then. And I was very, I was taken aback though, that he, he because I have been to some conventions where, um, not TFN or Auto Assembly, but conventions in the past where the guests have come out, been on stage, you know, they've done the, done the panel, um, and then they sign their autographs, that's it. Um, 
LeVar Burton was very much like that. When we met LeVar Burton, um, I think he was jet lagged, which is fine, understandable, but he, um, yeah, he didn't really want to interact with anyone. Um, but, yeah, the. the, the there's that sort of thing, you know, which a lot of American conventions do that. Um, they, the guests come out and it's, you know, pointing with a stick and say, do your thing, you know, and then they're sequestered away and you don't see them. Whereas TFN and Auto Assembly, um, the guests will hang out in the bar with you. They will regale you with the stories. They will genuinely fucking sit with you. And, that. Um, and another good story. Um, oh, yeah. Another good story from 2009 was we were going for food. Dave Calaprime says to me, goes, oh, we're going for food. Do you fancy so? Do you want to come with us? Yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll do it. And then we're going to do a podcast up in the room. Fantastic. Yeah, cool. That sounds brilliant. So we went over to the <laughs> went over to the takeaway, which was opposite, right off, over the road from the hotel in Birmingham City Centre. And... We got, uh, you know, everybody got whatever they got. And I got burger and chips. And I heard the guy say salt and vinegar. I remember it real clear. But in my head, I, he went chip spice. Now, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, in Hull, we have, like, paprika salt that we put on chips. It's called American chip spice. You can buy it throughout the, the UK in supermarkets and stuff. But... In Hull, in the supermarket, in the takeaways, they put it on the chips. It's called chip spice. And, um, so, yeah, it's a whole thing. All, uh, apparently, only in Hull it happens. It might happen elsewhere, but from, from what I understand, it uh, only happens in Hull. So, we get back to the room where we're doing the podcast. We're all munching away now, and I took a big bite on my bag. Well, I always, I always take a couple of chips for you. It's that in my bag. So, I got a couple of chips. I went, I went, Oh, there's salt vinegar on these fucking chips, and everybody looked at me. and went as if as if I as if I'd just said you know somebody put fucking you know petrol on them or something. I don't know. Um, I went. There's no fucking chip spice. What's that about? And everybody's like, what? And then I explained what chip spice was. But anyway, we started the this, we started the we started the um, uh, uh, podcast off, and we're all sort of. Laughing and joking and trying to talk over each other and it was quite fun and and then you know explaining that everybody everybody almost everybody in that room had bought a transkeeter because of George exaggerated elegy's review uh, myself included and then Greg Berger comes in the whole room goes quiet sits down and. We saw, and we're just listening. We're just listening to him tell stories about, um, you know, getting the job on Transformers, basically. And um, we're we're, just, we're all sat there just going, "Tell us more," you know. It's like like going to see your granddad, you know, that kind of thing where he's telling you stories. And it was it was fucking brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Um, again, lightning in a bottle, and it was just it was just that time, that location with that group of people. Um, yeah, it was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. And uh, one of my cherished, cherished memories is that um, there's a great picture of us um, floating about the internet of all of us together, um, and it was just, just like I said, lightning in a bottle. So yeah, yeah. So next question. So that's the end of the questions. Yes. So I've answered some questions. Um, Thanks for um, sitting and listening to me and talk bollocks like I always do. Um, <laughs> um, and if you're still here, please give me a thumbs up. Um, so, it would be lovely for you, glorious bunch of bastards out there, um, to give me a donation on Patreon. Um, and give me a massive fucking thumbs up. And give me a subscribe as well, if you like. You don't have to. Um, but hit that notification bell to tell you when I've got new um, content out. And check out my playlist here of other past TFN videos. Um, they will be more. Now I have my camera back. Um, and I will catch you all in 23 days. 
uh, five hours and about ten minutes thereabouts. So I will see you soon. Adios.